What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Green Beat. As you can see, I'm in my band director's uniform, which means it is none other than game day here in the land of golden sunshine. So, I figured I'd talk about one of the most important things as a collegiate percussion instructor or even a high school or middle school instructor uh, that I feel that you should keep with you on game day, and that is none other than a toolkit. And your toolkit does not have to be super sophisticated. It can be a drum key and a multi-tool. That way you can quickly adjust some things on your drums and keep it moving. Mine is a little bit more in-depth, and I'll kind of talk about some of the things that I keep in mind, and hopefully it'll inspire you uh, to add some stuff to yours, or in the comments below you can let me know what you keep in your personal toolkit. So, first things first is none other than the drum key. So this is a high tension key and I have a regular drum key that you use for like a drum set uh, for comparison. So as you can see on the high tension key, the arms are a little bit longer, that way you have that leverage, especially those of you who use the Kevlar heads like a Black Max or a White Max. Uh, that way you can have the leverage to get that high tension that those drums need to sound the best that they can. Also, of course, you may need to make adjustments to pitch, whether that be after warm-up or whenever you get off the bus, um, and you may need to adjust the pitch of your drums. You can't go wrong with having a drum key. Um, honestly, you can't go wrong with having multiple drum keys. I always try to keep at least two or three uh, in my toolkit so that if I can't adjust uh, everyone, I can commission one of my section leaders or somebody that I trust um, to tune the drums to help me uh, make quick work of tuning the drums. That way the section sounds as best as they can. The next thing that I keep with me is a set of socket wrenches. And I use these primarily for our quint section. Uh, sometimes I may look at them during performances or right before the performance uh, and I'll notice that their drums may be sitting a little too low or they might come to me and say, Prof, uh, my drums may need to be adjusted. They're sitting a little bit high. Uh, or something about this feels weird or they're squeaking and they keep moving when I pull them down and pull them up. So I keep these on my person whenever we're out at, out at a game or out at an event. That way I can quickly make those adjustments. Also, sometimes the screws to their spacers may fall out. So I always keep extra parts. Uh, that way I can add an extra screw to make sure that spacer is nice and secure. And I use a socket wrench to tighten it up. The next thing, and honestly, the coolest thing I have is a drill. And not just a drill, it's a drill with a drum key drill bit. So, this has saved me so many man hours in the summer when I'm doing maintenance on the drums by myself. It has also saved me so much time when I have to change heads in the field um, and we don't have time to use a regular uh, T key, uh, even if it's two people. This has saved me so much time because all I have to do is take the drill, go to the drum, and quickly, almost like a NASCAR pit crew, is, is that fast. Um, and I will say, I, when I put the new head on the drum, I do not tune with this. You never want to tune with the drill because it is so easy to damage your drums by over tightening or you can uh, put too much tension on that rod and you can actually snap it off. Um, so. I will say, never tune with this drill, Dun. but when I do uh, put the new head on, I make sure I leave a gap between the top of the tension rod and the level of the, the hoop. That way I can kind of see through it and then I can go back with my fingers and my T-key and put the right amount of tension on it and tune the head accordingly. Next, I always keep a set of Allen wrenches um, and this, again, much like the socket wrenches, I keep these uh, for the quint section so they can adjust their carriers and their J-bars just in case they're sitting um, too high or sometimes I've been in a situation where the J-bar is broken and so we had to quickly replace it and if I did not have um, an Allen key uh, and a drum key, I wouldn't have been able to replace it. Or sometimes the receiver uh, that the J-bar sits in has come off or has been uh, a little bit wobbly and I needed to tighten it up real quick. So I keep these Allen keys for that purpose. Next, in this old sack, I promise these are new tension rods. The sack was old when I got it and I just didn't see a need in replacing it. It, it didn't have a hole in it or anything. But uh, I also keep a set of tension rods 
That way, if any of them t tend to fall out while we're moving from place to place or uh, if they've fallen out and the student just never noticed it, I can quickly um, put those back in and make sure that there's even tension all across the drum head. Next, I keep some type of lubricant. This is Vaseline and you can use Vaseline. You can also use white lithium grease or lug lube or uh, anything that you have, uh, I always say, do your research first because you don't want to hurt the drums. But anything that you've properly researched that will not hurt the drums or the, uh, the metal that the tension rods are made with or even the tension rod housing. I always like to lubricate the tension rods after I change it, a drum head or if I'm just doing maintenance. I always want to try to lubricate them. That way I can kind of um, provide a sense of cushion so it's not metal on metal grinding nail when I'm changing a new head. I can have that uh, lubricant cushion. That way uh, the lugs uh, and the tension rods last a whole lot longer. Speaking of lubricant, you always want to make sure you have a rag. That way you can wipe that excess off of the lug and off of your hands. And these also come in handy when it's raining out because we play in rain as well. Um, it helps if we're coming in from the rain, you always want to wipe down your drums, especially the metal parts and the wood. The wooden part uh, is normally protected by some type of covering, but you still want to wipe it off. But I mainly use this to wipe off the cymbals and the hoops because the hoops will rust as well as the tension rods, they'll rust on you. So you want to make sure you get all of the moisture off of them as well. And the rest of the things in my toolbox, honestly, are built in for a system of redundancy. Uh, I keep extra drum keys, I keep uh, extra screws, extra parts uh, to drums just in case because I found that you never know what's going to go wrong until it, go wrong, until it goes wrong. So I hope that this has inspired you to, uh, if not, if you don't have a toolkit, to get one. If you want to add some things that you may not have thought about. Uh, I encourage you to go ahead and add them. And of course, in the comments, I want to see what you guys keep in your personal toolkits. So, this wraps up another episode of The Green Beat. Stay musical, my friends.